The following is a is not a true story. It's been invented by me. Um, it hasn't yet been invented. Now I can. As I say it. Long time ago, uh, there was a child, and the child was an excellent athlete. Charles an athlete, uh, quite a successful athlete. He won awards, he won medals. His heart was never in it. It was always one of those things that, you know, his parents wanted him to do or that he wanted to do, and he sort of fell into it. So he's trying to pluck up courage to tell his parents that he didn't want to be an athlete. He couldn't. He tried and tried. And then he decided he was going to do it. say, hey parents, parents, I've decided that I don't want to be an athlete anymore. What I want to do is, I want to be, I'm not sure what I want to be. Chance I might come back to athletics. I just want to have the choice of everyone. You know, up until then he thought his parents were quite accepting of him, no matter what he did. His dad. His dad was, his dad took it and destroyed it. Well, okay, we put quite a lot of money and effort into your athletics, but it's not making you happy. Because there's nothing we can do. But his mother, his mother went ballistic. She said, <coughs> You can't do that. And she locked him, locked him away underneath the ground where nobody could find him. And he kept the athletics underground, but it wasn't really about the athletics of the mother. She just wanted to be able to tell people how talented. Her child was 
she was a deeply self-conscious woman and projected that onto her wishes for a child. She wanted them to be as good as she thought she was. not The child didn't like it on the ground though. thought it was cold, and he thought it was damp, and he didn't like that there were animals just scuttling about. So Isaiah's going to dig his way out. It's really dug straight up into the ceiling of the small underground room he was in and he dug up as far as he could but then he was too short and he couldn't reach the ceiling anymore so he dug sideways out of the wall because way he, he didn't have to be very tall and he wasn't he was quite a small child five or six um, and so he was digging, digging and 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 digging for days. In a straight line out of the side wall of his underground room in which he was. Until one day he arrived at a wall underground. And he thought, it was mighty strange to have a wall on the ground where no one would see it if there wasn't a room on the other side. An underground room, possibly similar to the one he was in, but it had a wall. So, that was something. So he decided he was going to try and get through the wall. It wasn't easy. It was only a very small child. But the walls were very well constructed. So he managed to get through in the end. And when he got through, it wasn't a room. It was a miniature. A miniature sort of, sort of park. Miniature park. Trees that high. Little rivers, ponds, and lakes. Tiny little people walking tiny little dogs. Having a good time. Having a good time. Well, having a very good time. It's a little tiny little man. A tiny little bike. Just on the floor, kind of wrapped around sort of the interior of a sphere, despite the wall that the child just dug through being flat. He didn't think about this, he had bigger things to worry about. Because as he looked down, he realised where he was standing, he was crushing. He's crushing all these tiny people in a tiny park. Screaming, and you know, that he stood, he'd always be crushing tiny people and causing a massive nuisance. So now he felt more despondent than ever. He, was, he just he couldn't hack it. In the end, he decided to go back to the wall. And to dig around the strange miniature park. But he tried to do so. The small people in the park saw that he wasn't he wasn't doing it maliciously, he wasn't meaning to crush all these people. He was just much bigger than they were. And so they they 
walked up to where his head was because obviously it's a sphere so by walking forwards you just go up so they came up and it's towards his head and they came up and the very small voice was said child, small child small child please please don't leave us because you're the biggest person we've ever seen. We don't want you to think that we're going to treat you like some sort of freak or anything. We just think it would be good for us to have a big person around. So that when we want to go from one side of the park to the other, you can pick us up and put us down somewhere else. But, also, we don't, I mean, that's not to say that you have to, like, just, what you, you were just using me for that, uh, because you seem quite nice, you've not, you've not tried to crush us all, lots of people as big as you were trying to stamp on all of us, crush us to death, you haven't. You've been very nice. So, you can go if you want to, but just say you'll come back. And so the child left through the hole he made in the wall. The flat wall in the spherical room. And he decided to dig up upwards at a 45 degree angle. He's a bit annoyed that he didn't think of that before. I mean, it's the obvious solution, but, you know, he's only five or six as a child. Children don't have much experience with digging underground tunnels. And so he's... There he is. He comes up, and he comes up the finish line of a race, and his mother and father are there. And they're so happy to see him. They don't care that he wasn't in the race. Especially the mother. The mother doesn't care because he looked like he was in the race. And that was all that mattered to the mother because she was so self-centered. The father didn't care because he, he was supportive and he didn't, he didn't care what the child was doing so the child was happy. And the child was happy to see them. He, if he was older, he'd have realised that the mother shouldn't have locked him in an underground room and left him for dead. But, to be honest, he was just happy to see her. And they went home. Had sandwiches. But, he'd forgotten that he said he was going to see those little people again. So one day, when he was very, very old. Very old and grey. Old and grey and slow. He remembered he was laying in bed, fast asleep, and he sat up, felt upright, and remembered that he had to go and meet the little people in the spherical park, but he couldn't remember where the hole he dug was, or the room he dug it from. So he died, dissatisfied man. Thank mm-hmm. you.